walk through the preparation of a statement of cash flows. Strong House Inc. had the following condensed statement of financial position at December 31st, 2019. Strong House Inc. follows IFRS and chooses to classify dividends paid as financing activities and interest paid as operating activities on the statement of cash flows. During 2020, the following occurred. Strong House Inc. sold part of its investment portfolio in bonds for $15,500, resulting in a gain of $500. Dividends totaling $19,000 were paid to shareholders. A parcel of land to be used as a parking lot was purchased for $5,500. Common shares were issued for cash totaling $20,000. Bonds payable of $10,000 were retired at par. Equipment was purchased through the issuance of 32,000 of bonds. Net income for 2020 was $42,000 after allowing for depreciation on Strong Houses Inc.'s plant assets of 13,550. The amount of interest paid during 2020 was $4,150 and the amount of income taxes was 19,500. Both current assets other than cash and current liabilities remained at the same amount and were asked to prepare a statement of cash flows for 2020 using the indirect method. Okay, so the indirect method. So here we're gonna start with net income and then we're gonna reconcile net income back to cash flows from operating activities. So let's set up the format for our statement. So we're always gonna start with the name of the company. So this company is called Stronghouse and we're gonna say statement of cash flows. And it's for the year ending, December 31st, 2020. Okay, so the first thing we know we're gonna do is we're gonna have, we're gonna have Tilly Blower section. So we're gonna have cash flows from operating activities. We're gonna have down here, we're gonna have cash flows from investing activities. And we're gonna have, down here, we're gonna have cash flows from financing activities. Just called investing, not investing activities. Okay, so we got that. And then, so we've kind of set up the skeleton here and we know we're gonna start because we're using the indirect method, we're gonna start with net income. So net income, and I highly recommend that as we're working through these questions, that we're tracking the data that we're using so we can make sure that we've used all the appropriate data. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to scratch out what I've used so I can figure out what I have left. So here in number seven, it says net income for 2020 was 42,000. So I'm gonna put 42,000 in here. And then now I'm just gonna nicely scratch out this line just so that I know I've got that. And now it says, after allowing for depreciation on Stronghouse's plant assets of 13,550. Well, we know we need to add back depreciation expense to our cash flow statement because we expense it for accounting, but it's not a cash item. So for the, for here, we are going to say, so we've got net income, then we're gonna have a label here that says adjustments. Adjustments. And one of our adjustments here is going to be depreciation. And we're going to add that back. So we're going to say, okay, well, depreciation, I'm going to add back. And it was 13,550. So I'm going to increase my cash for that because it was already deducted from net income, it's non cash. I'm adding it back. So now I'm going to scratch that out. So now we've got the depreciation. 13,550. Okay. Now what else? So now I need to look at what else I've got on here. So then it says the amount of interest paid was 4,150 and the amount of income taxes was 19,500. Now there's a really important sentence in this, in this uh, preamble to the question where it says both current assets and current liabilities remained at the same amount. Now see up here how we're given See up here how we're given the this comparative income statement or comparative balance sheet, I'm sorry. 
Now, normally what we're given in these questions is we're given two years and then we need to look at the increase of the decrease in working capital and flow it through the cash flow statement. Whereas here we're only given one year. We, there, we will need to use the cash item later and we'll get to that. But everything else here we can disregard because we're told that all the working capital other than cash is the same. So there's no changes that we need to flow through from that. So it's kind of unique. And that this is the sentence that alerts us to that where it says both current assets other than cash and current liabilities remained at the same amount. And that's why we're not gonna have any sort of an adjustment for the interest paid or the income taxes because we don't know what was accrued in those lines. So we can disregard those for the purposes of this question. So we're okay here because we were told that DP is the same amount. So we're, those ones are fine. Okay, so let's go back here. So let's start at the top now because we needed net income first. So let's look here. So we've got Stronghouse Inc. sold part of its investment portfolio in bonds for 15,500, resulting in a gain of $500. Okay, so how are we going to unpackage this one? So we've got number one, they sold their portfolio in bonds for 15,500. So we are gonna have this under investing activities because investing in bonds, it's even called an investment. So we're gonna have the proceeds from the sale of bonds. And we're gonna have 15,500 here. So that's positive, we got cash from the sale of those bonds. So we got that part done, but now it says it resulted in a gain of $500. So a gain is an accounting concept. It does nothing to do with cash flow. What that means is that we're gonna to need to add it back up here as we're adjusting net income to a cash basis, we need to take out the gain. So we're gonna go minus $500, which is the gain. So now we've dealt with both of those. Let's cross those out. So we got this 15,500 and we got the 500. Dividends totaling 19,000 were paid to shareholders. Okay, so where are we gonna deal with dividends? Well, dividends are a financing activity and we're even told right here, Stronghouse follows IFRS and chooses to classify dividends paid as financing activities. So we know we're gonna have the dividends here and it's gonna say dividends paid. And we're gonna have 19,000 here. Oops. Oh, what happened there? Let's just fix that. Whoops. Okay. Okay, what happened here? Cash flows, financing activities. Dividends paid, and we're going to have a negative 19,000 here. Okay, so we got that. So we can cross out that one. A parcel of land to be used as a parking lot was purchased for $5,500. So what are we, what is the purchase of land for a parking lot? Well, purchasing land is definitely an investing activity. So we're gonna have the purchase of lands and we're gonna have a subtraction. So it cost us money to buy the land. So we're gonna have negative 5,500 here. And now we've dealt with this one. So let's cross that off. Okay. Now co common shares were issued for cash totaling $20,000. So common shares are gonna be a financing activity. So the proceeds from the issuance of common shares is going to be, we get $20,000. And of course that's a plus because we got $20,000 from the proceeds of the common shares. Now we've dealt with that one. Let's click back and forth here. Okay, bonds payable of $10,000 were retired at par. So we know that a bond at par means that it's $10,000. We know that from previous chapters. So we retired a bond at 
$10,000. So we had to pay to retire the bond. Bonds are investing activities. So we had the proceeds from the sale of bonds, but we also retired bonds. So payment to retire bonds. And we're gonna have a negative 10,000 here because we paid out 10,000 to retire that bond. Now we've got equipment was purchased through the issuance of $32,000 in bonds. Now, what do we think about this? Where would this go on our cash flow statement? Well, it says the equipment was purchased through bonds. So this is actually a non-cash item. So at the bottom of our cash flow, we usually have a section called non-cash items. And we're gonna have we're gonna have the proceeds for uh, our issuance of equipment. bonds. And this is going to be the 32,000. And we're going to just make a note of this interest paid down here too that we scratched out in seven. So we're going to have cash paid during the year or we're going to have interest. So it says we paid let's move this over just so we don't get confused. This isn't part of our cash flow subtotal. This is supplemental. And we paid interest of 4150 and we paid income taxes of 19,500. And we need to disclose this under IFRS. So this is supplemental non-cash items, supplemental. And what supplemental means is that this is not part of the, of the main cash flow statement. This is just like an extra schedule that we're providing. Okay, so we got that. Is there anything left that we haven't picked up? We got this one. It looks like we've picked everything up now. So now we can run our subtotals through our cash flow. So let's see what our investing activities are. So first we run through our sum and then we're gonna change our title to either cash provided by operating activities or cash used by operating activities. So this is a positive. So this is gonna be cash provided by operating activities. Okay, and here, some this one. So this is going to be, what happened there? What do we have here? So we've got purchase of land, sale of bonds. Where did we get this 15,500 from? Yeah, the 15,500 and the purchase of the land. And this one actually is in the wrong section, my apologies. So payment to retire the bonds is gonna be a financing activity. So we'll move that one down. And now we're gonna have cash. Well, let's see what that subtotal is. Now it's 10,000, so it's cash used, used by investing activities. Because you can see it's a negative, so we use up $10,000 of cash. And then cash flow from financing activities, we're gonna have See what this one is. So it's also being used. So we used up cash here. Just move this down. I'm gonna clear out the supplemental section at the bottom here just for a few minutes. Um, actually, no, we'll just move it down. Let's just keep moving it down. So we'll just move it over here. So this is just a separate section that we're gonna have at the bottom of our cash flow statement, but we need some extra room here. So we'll just clear that out. Okay, so this is gonna be cash flow used by financing activities. And then what happens now at the bottom of our statement? So at the bottom of our statement now, we're gonna have net increase in cash. And we're gonna add up 
all the different activities from all the different subtotals. So we've got cash by operating activities. We're going to sum up the cash used by investing activities, and we're going to sum the cash used by financing activities. So you can see that our overall increase in cash is 55 minus 10 minus 9. For some reason, I seem to get a weird total from this. So 55, 10, and 9 is... 56, see the subtotal down there. So this is 56,050. So that's what this is going to be, 56,050, which is the sum of, let's try that again. Let's go the sum of 55 plus, so this is a positive because this should be positive because, how did we get a negative there? Sum, because we've got an inflow of 15,500. There we go. Okay, so 10, so we've got cash provided by, this one should say provided by, cash provided by. Okay, now we've got it. So here's our net increase in cash. So we've made, we've got 55,000 from operating activities. We got 10,000 from investing activities and we used up 9,000 in investing activities. So our overall net increase in cash, which is just, all the subtotals here, just to make it clear, I'll bold these just so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, and then that's gonna give us our net increase in cash. Now, then we're gonna reconcile back to the statement of financial position. So we're gonna have cash balance, January 1st, 2020. And that's where the statement that we haven't really used yet is gonna come into play. So you can see here cash on January or on December 31st, 2019 was 10,000, which means our opening cash for January 1st, 2020 was 10,000. So we're gonna put 10,000 here. And now we need to know what our cash balance is for December 31st, 2020, because that's what this cash flow statement date is. You can see that's what we're doing here. We've been asked to do so. What it, we don't know what our cash what our cash balance is, so we need to solve for it. We were not given the statement of financial position at December thirty first, twenty twenty. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, we had ten thousand, and our cash increased by fifty six thousand zero five zero. So that means our ending cash has to be sixty six zero five zero, and that is the correct answer there. So you can see that for this indirect method, we've labeled it properly. We've got the name of the company. We've got the statement, the fact that it's a statement of cash flows and the term, the year ending December 31st, 2020. We have started with our cash flows from operating activities, which with the indirect method, we've got net income. And then we're making adjustments to, to change net income from an accrual basis to a cash basis. Then we've got our investing activities, which were proceeds from bond, the sale of bonds and the purchase of land. And then we've got financing activities where we had we paid dividends, we uh, we issued common shares, and we retired some bonds. And overall, that gave us our inc net increase in cash, and we've been able to reconcile that back to the opening and ending cash balance. In addition, we've got our supplemental information here, which is where we've shown any non-cash transactions. There was equipment that was purchased for bonds, not for cash, so we've disclosed that here. And we disclose the cash paid during the year for interest and for income taxes. And that concludes this question.